And continuing the futility, we move out of the March-April quarterly turn. The Swedish Queen still hasn't died, so there's not even a succession uh, decision there, which can change some things. Not a lot happening here. Now, the Swedes did decide to launch a fleet. They prepared a fleet. Now, they're still iced in, but they're hoping that ice will break up and they'll be able to start operating. They're hoping to be able to make their way towards here. They've got a mission in mind that they want to do this show of force on Kronstadt again, <clears throat> which will essentially be blockading Kronstadt in. Um, over for the Russians, they feel a lot less likely that this area will become free of ice. Plus, their missions, an escort mission for the convoy that doesn't exist yet and supporting the army campaign, really kind of require these things to be progressing on the land. And I have no intention of doing the land campaign at this point right now because I'm looking turn six here. The April-May turn is going to be ugly weather almost assuredly wet and yucky and i don't want to move this would have been a great turn if i had chosen this turn um to start a defensive campaign to move my stuff forward this would have been the time to do it because we had frost but there was no way of knowing that it looked like it was warming up didn't it uh cold snap came all right anyway here we are starting into the spring and it Really looks like an ugly situation. When I think of what the Swedes are in here, um, they don't have the force. If this thing starts moving, they don't have the force to hold off. This is somewhat the historical situation. So rather than lose prestige, and which they might manage a little bit, uh, and more importantly, give the Russians prestige, they would pull off the map as they did historically. Uh, get back to a position where maybe they can gain prestige by fighting, you know, a, a defensive war up here uh, on the way to Stockholm. That's quite the possibility. On the other hand, how much do the Russians really need to advance? How, how big a deal is it to them? Well, if they want to keep Gaining prestige, they have to maintain contact with the Swedes. Over here on the naval side, things are very, very different, though. Uh, there's no reason the naval war can't be conducted aggressively by the Swedes. But they have to be careful because a lot of their little tokens that come up are ones that maybe, not these, but like supporting the, the uh, Lacey's campaign one side or another, Maybe they don't really want to draw because, well, maybe they won't have an opportunity to actually fulfill them and they'll take penalties uh, from that. But on the other hand, if they can, they can actually get it, you win the naval campaign in a different way than the land campaign. The land campaign in this is kind of, uh, <laughs> it, it really doesn't make a lot of sense to stand and fight here. And, in terms of the uh, campaign victory condition. And that's kind of nice because historically, most games would not allow you to proceed the way the Swedes actually did in Finland with the withdrawal. But in this one, it is actually what you want to do to win the game. You want to pull out because you don't want to risk your, your army. Well, a little strangeness. The ice cap up here cleared, but we still have too much ice in here. So the Swedes got stuck out here and actually I've got to roll because they're uh, fitting out. They take, oh, I got to roll for each squadron, I guess. Uh, two hits on that one. One hit on the next one, two hits on this one. Not a good start for them, trying to start too early on their mission. Um, now, over on uh, the land side, and nobody chose to uh, set out more fleets. The Russians still aren't prepared primarily because they're still not prepared to do anything here. I looked at the chart for next turn. It's an April-May turn. Right now it'll be at 7. Well, the chance of dry weather isn't very good here either. 7 through 9. I should have chosen it, it turns out, because I got a lot of ops points, which means I could, you know, re-roll the weather like I did last time. But I'm in no tremendous hurry. I don't think that 
it's going to make much difference how much time I give. The more time I give the Swedes, the more likely maybe they'll defend. And indeed, they got themselves uh, an extra strength point, but they can't launch it because of the ice packs there. So uh, they can't even start to put their convoy together for that, I think. All right, uh, so that's the end of this one. We go into May, and that's one kind of neat thing is the turns are flying by like mad because there's nothing to do. You know, I was thinking about uh, coordinating the two games is really rough. It's much, much simpler when you're just playing one of the two. <laughs> you don't have a lot of pieces on the board. Yes, you're having to look up a lot, but you're not having to constantly swing between one sequence of play and the other. And I think... Uh, Really, you know, the designer does point out you want to play this with one player per side per map. You really want the two different players to be focusing. You, you want the players to be focusing on the thing that they're focusing on. Uh, trying to split division of, 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 uh, uh, of attention is just really hard. And, you know, playing the role of four different people all at once in a kind of interactive type way with a lot of rules, lookups, and everything. That's a rough thing. I think it would be fun in four. Uh, I, I, I really do. But I, I don't suggest uh, sitting down two-player or even solitaire like I'm doing and playing the dual map situation. All right, again here, the May-June turn is what we're moving into. We just finished up May. And not much happened. The Swedes, finally the ice cover broke, but it's still right packed through here so I can't move to my destination or towards it any further. I pulled here into uh, Oxalosund. Um, the Russians have chosen still not to launch more ships. Uh, they're still gathering their fleets, whatever. They're going to be in pretty good shape. Uh, if you look at what they've got here, a lot of ships of the line, uh, some lesser ships that they can use as auxiliaries. They're going to probably be able to handle this fairly well. We'll see how that works out, but right now, since this is heading up here, and the Russians aren't sure of that, but meh, otherwise the Swedes could have kind of cut through and down into Riga, which is the most likely place that they'd be uh, hitting. Maybe they're only going for Revel or something like that, but we don't know that. Um, anyway, not a lot happened there. Do you see another reinforcement came in at Stockholm? We're trying... We're going to have to start gathering up a convoy to carry them across and might as well do that all at once. Over at the, uh, the other side of things, still nothing happening on the land here, but the Russians have decided to start their uh, defensive command. And the reason for that is next turn, it's very unlikely to be mud. It's still fairly likely to be wet, but that's somewhat more acceptable, and it's pretty likely to be dry. This turn was a mud turn. Of course, could have spent an operation to try to re-roll. Uh, given the odds on the next one, the Russians have a lot of operations ready. And they're going to move themselves into place and then launch an attack, or maybe multiple uh, attacks, because... They're kind of interested in this location. If they can wipe all the uh, Swedish fortresses off the map, uh, wipe the Swedes out of all their fortresses, then the Swedes withdraw from the board. It doesn't necessarily help you win, though. Uh, not a lot else happening over here. So, Looks like next turn we're going to start seeing the land units positioning themselves, though. And we may actually see the, the sea, some sea action again. Oh, boy. Uh... Ian finally got a chance to catch up with uh, my videos. And I'm always impressed when somebody watches through them all, uh, the designer or whatever. I know watching someone play so badly must be painful. But he came back with some uh, clarifications and, and corrections, some of which are pretty important. Uh, some of them I think were just me kind of babbling and questioning something, maybe not sure I was doing things right, and they all seem to come into alignment. The ones that weren't. Well, here's one. These escort orders, and I looked in the rules and couldn't find it, but I don't know. Uh, maybe they're in the specific rules for the uh, for Summer Scrawl. The escort orders are 
treat it as always in hand and never penalties, just like the uh, rendezvous orders. This is important. In fact, that's the one reason that uh, that the Swedes have a victory point here is because the Russians had an extra escort order in their hand. All right, so I'm going to uh, cancel that out because here's the point. That escort order, you might not get to play that if you draw it. You might not get a convoy in any reasonable time. Uh, so even though I had a, a convoy, I think, I didn't get a chance to use it. And those are apparently free orders. Uh, like the rendezvous and the handoffs, um, although handoffs don't even have a counter. The other, this is huge. Nowhere does it restrict me to keeping strength points in a formation, apparently. Hmm. Uh, so I can shift troops and pile them up anywhere. So this whole rigmarole I'm going through with the Russian army is bull. I could have shifted them during the administrative phase turns ago. What I'm going to do to make up for that is, well, there really isn't an answer, unfortunately. I'm going to keep playing the way I am and charge the Russians with the uh, movement. Some other things, guards apparently uh, don't get removed from the game when they're They, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. They get removed from the game when they're injured. They don't get destroyed by uh, not moving. Or they can recover their uh, their losses, I mean. So I'm going to pump him up a little bit. He survived and would have been able to increase his, uh, his status. I'm sure there were more little things. Uh, oh! This little chart here, because this this preyed on me, and I would have found it, I think I had before, and then just put it out of my mind, because I've never done it. Uh, and maybe that's something I should have done. Uh, somewhere on the battle chart, right? Yeah, these letters up here, those are for when you're attacking a, a, a convoy that's actually here down here. I just never got that far down in the thing, because that's not what I was doing. Um, when you're attacking a convoy with an auxiliary, that's the correct column to use to damage the convoy. And, you know, I mean, there's rules where you can task an auxiliary to raid the convoy, essentially. Okay. Phew. Back to the game. I don't know where I am. I've Anyway, having to come back to do these corrections, and, and they kind of piled up over the last uh, half day or so, kind of made me shy away again. Not because I hate making corrections, but because I can't keep it all in my head. Um, in a lot of senses, the rules failures for me, I think, have a lot to do. I formed a mental block on this game uh, because I didn't absorb it right away sitting out on the porch, reading, drinking, smoking a cigar, I couldn't understand what it was at all. Either one, even the land one, which I do have a fair idea of, I think, but still, looking back at the rules, I have a hard time cranking through it. All right, onward. Okay, two round, uh, two impulses into the turn, and we've got the Swedish fleet sailing its way up here. We've got a convoy, which is fully loaded now with its two strength points. Uh, ready to set sail, land some additional troops in Finland. Over here, oops, I missed one of my ices. We've got the ice beginning to retract, and the Russian army on the move. Obviously, I didn't have to do that. Um, I, they should have been deployed to the front already, but had they been deployed to the front, the Swedes would have had an order at this point uh, so that they could react. The Russians would have had an offensive order. So, you know, I'm going to suffer a little bit marching them through this bad terrain. And it is definitely suffering. The Swedish army, although in much better shape than the Russians will be at the end of this, may not be in any position to face them. They're still tiny compared to that Russian army. They took so many losses marching on St. Petersburg and that failure. 
Uh, so right now we've got a Russian unit marching, a column marching up to head to here. Now this is kind of problematic. I have to put a supply source somewhere. Where? I don't think I can take this with a siege. Uh, there has to be a depot. As far as I can tell, and this is because I'm not good at reading rules, uh, I look here and I see, hey, town says depot allowed. Does anything else? Not really. I'm going to have to look that up, but I think I can't even siege this because this is more than four movement points. Over here, the closest other town on the road is more than four. I don't think I can lay siege to the damn thing. Uh, no idea there. I'm going to have to look that up. In which case, maybe this army has to turn around and head back. And if I can't siege that, I can't chase the Swedes off the map, because that's a fortress. Mm. Okay, uh, I finished the third impulse here over on the naval map, and you can see the Swedish Navy is moving forward into position. The Russians don't have a fleet built yet, uh, but they will be able to challenge this, I think. We'll see. Over here, well, I was very worried about the depot situation and that this wasn't in range. That's no big deal. Yes, I can't have one in range, but a depot isn't absolutely required for a siege. It's only required to use auxiliaries in a siege, including artillery. So, I can actually conduct that siege. I'm not sure how well that'll go out there with no supply in range, etc., but we'll see. Okay, and as we move into the quarterly June-July turn, that happens on both maps, um, definite problem. <laughs> Not with the rules, but with the Russian fleet. I decided to launch a, a fleet to cruise Riga because, in part, to disrupt this situation. However, I drew an admiral with only a command rating of one, I have two ships in there. I don't have very many good admirals. I lost my only good one, and he was the fleet admiral, and can't really use him anyway. So I've ended up with uh, more ships than I can control in battle, and there's also a penalty for movement and attrition with moving this. Um, a strategy rating could remove one of those ships, but I'm undergunned comparatively. I had a fairly healthy fleet together and I guess maybe what I should have done was try to build two little flotillas and send them after the Swedes. I don't know. You can't really create a massive armada in this game. <laughs> um, having numbers doesn't necessarily mean you can do terribly well and this good Swedish leader up here is probably going to be able to defeat anything that my Russians could do. That puts me in a troublesome position. I also launched... Oh, I forgot to check for convoy. I didn't even get one. Um, I also launched a, a detachment with orders to help support the, uh, the land operations, they're going to have trouble getting through that Kronstadt situation too. At least I'll have those extra galleys I can throw into the battle maybe. But this doesn't look good for the Russians at all. Over here, the Swedes decided to stand fast. And I pumped as many... I had troops scattered throughout Finland actually. I pumped as much as I could into that main army. I'm ready to fight. The feeling here being... Look, the Russians already are winning on prestige. They could just pocket the game at this point. So instead of, uh, instead of allowing that to happen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to stand and fight and prevent them. Now this could be a better victory for the Russian commander. On the other hand, uh, a win here could be glorious for the Swedes. They could do quite a bit here. So I am risking that. And the Russians are going after two locations. Um, I've got the DCP for the Swedes, so they can move. They may evacuate from here. This, I don't know. That may be hard to take without a depot. All right, up this one goes, and we start into the high sun.